in 90 days, you can transform your body as if you transform your habits. What kind of workouts are you a proponent of? I'm a big proponent of time under tension and I think the biggest hurdle these guys have, they're like, all right, first off, I don't know what to do, but inevitably it leads to the second question of, okay, well, now that I have the plan, how do I execute? How do you simplify that process? I basically break down What's up, Wealth Builders? Today, we're talking all about health. You guys know I've been on my journey to get jacked, and so I've had a few health guys on, and this guy I want to bring on because he's actually training some of the people in my office. He has trained over a 1,000 people, in fact, and uh, we're going to talk about what entrepreneurs must do to get in the best shape of their life so they can run their businesses, be there for their families, look really cool online and whatever else. I got Michael Sheedy with me. What's up, man? Awesome, brother. Thanks for having me, dude. Yeah, dude. So I was on your Instagram today and I'll link to that down below. And dude, I mean, like I'm looking at like the transformations of some people. It's crazy. Yeah, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. A lot of hard work, dude. A lot of hard work, but you know, with the right system. How quickly are these guys getting these kind of results? You know, you know, it's it's funny because people are like, is this possible in this amount of time? And yeah, in 90 days, you can transform your body as if you transform your habits. Right. You know, so I want to talk about this because you're, you know, you're working a lot with a lot of entrepreneurs, right? You're not, I mean, you, you'll work with uh, just normal people too, but like of at course. the end of the day, um, I know entrepreneurs have a different lifestyle than most normal people. And so Correct. what are the, some of the things that I guess what's step one, really? Yeah, I mean, step one is just, you know, first figuring out where you're at, you know, just like with anything else, um, you know, statistically speaking, we we have to know what is your current body composition, right? What's your body fat percentage? How much lean muscle mass do you have? What's your basal metabolic rate, right? Um, you know, if you're at a high body fat percentage, that's going to affect the way that your body uh, processes carbohydrates, right? So that would affect your diet. And then you also want to look not just at external statistics. You also want to look at internal statistics as well. You know, have you gotten blood work done in the last you know year? Um, do you know what your total testosterone is? Do you know what your your lipids are? Right, all those things you know contribute to how you go about planning out a program and how I go about planning out my my programs for my clients. Yeah, no, and it's important to I guess have a baseline right yeah. for for everything you're starting. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you and I were talking right before this about just your evolution as a trainer, right? And um, it's cool because like whenever I get guys like you, like I want to learn about health, but I also like talking about business because, you know, you were like, yeah, dude, like last year I, I transitioned to just going purely online after 10 years of, you know, training people in person and everything. And you're like, dude, you know, we did over half a million bucks with no marketing and everything else. And I'm like, dude, that's crazy. Yeah, appreciate like, it, brother. Yeah. To, to do that in your first year trying it, with no marketing is crazy. Yeah, thanks, dude. Yeah, I mean, it was funny because you were like, have you done, and I had a, a couple other people ask me, have you done paid ads? I'm like, I haven't even got into that yet because I've just relied on um, organic, you know, social media content. And then I've also, you know, been really good at replicating what I did in my in-person business, which is relationships, right? Really um, dialing in the, the the referrals and just coming from, you know, being able to deliver a good, a good product and service. Yeah. Before we get into the health side, I actually, I'm curious about that because uh, like what made you decide to go online? Because there's a lot of trainers watching this. There's a lot yeah. of just whatever businesses that are required to be in person. And for me, yeah. I'm like, dude, scale online gives you scale, yeah. reach. It's mm -hmm. it's easier. It's better. You help mm -hmm. more people. And so obviously I'm a huge proponent of going online. Of course. So what for, like what inspired you or like what were the steps you took you know what inspired me to go online was three things it was scalability right to make more money time freedom so i could you know work when i want to and location freedom i could work where i want to as well so i i'm a hustler so i'll work 60 hours a week regardless of of what industry i'm in but now being able to if i wanted to go for a week in miami and run my business i could do that and create right. content at the same time that was really appealing to me and you know i was able to create a six figure business as an in person trainer which is not easy to do um but for me personally that wasn't the income that i wanted or the schedule that i wanted being in the gym for you know 80 hours a week um you know i, I saw an opportunity to scale my business and you know hired a hired some business mentors and 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 was able to you know do what I did last year. So, yeah, no, that's amazing, bro. So let's talk about, um, you know, just this first part. Okay. I never got blood work done until like over a year ago. And 
I didn't know what I was reading or what it meant or anything like that. And I, it's not like I was in bad shape or I was tired or anything. I was just like, well, I'm in, you know, my mid thirties now I should probably start, you know, did get my blood done. What can I ask you? What made, like, did someone say something? Did you like, what compelled you to go do that? Um, I think it's like most things in life, the people around you, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. like I had a bunch of friends, uh, who were doing it yeah. and, and maybe you inspired me because you were training some of my friends Yeah, and they were getting their blood works done and they were getting jacked. And yeah. I was like, man, I think I'm more talented than him. That's just my mindset always. And uh, I'm like, man, he's getting pretty freaking jacked right now. He's like, yeah, well, you know, I've been working out. I got this. I'm doing peptides yeah. and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah. whatever. Yeah. And um, it wasn't just, you know, people I know like yeah. that way. But I also, you know, I go to these events. I'm with other entrepreneurs. Yeah. And yeah. one day, oh, you know who I was with? I was actually with Flex Lewis here Okay. at Dragon's yeah. Lair. Yeah. And uh, Flex, him and I were on a jet. This is our first time ever meeting. We were on a jet to San Francisco and um, he starts talking to me about sleep and blood work. And because I'm just asking him, I'm like, Flex, how do you become a Mr. Olympia? How do you do this? And um, he's like, you got to just be dialed in right. everything, your yeah. food, your workouts, your right. blood. Yeah. And I was like, all right, I understand food and workout. Tell me about blood. He's yeah. like, well, tell me like when's the last time you did blood work? I'm like, I've never done it. Yeah. He's like, bro, no, you need to do your blood work. And I was like, all right, well, if Flex Lewis tells me to do my blood work, I'm going to do it. Yeah. So it was kind of a combination. Awesome. Yeah. So you had your your personal influences and then talking to one of the greatest uh, Olympians of all time. Yep. Yeah. So that was how I got started with it. But um, yeah, I mean, I did it and I still didn't know how to read it. I mean, at the time, I, my test was like 300 or 350. And uh, they're like, yeah, I mean, you're, you're you're within range, but you're like at the very low end. Right. Yeah. Were you experiencing uh, symptoms of, of low T? Not that I knew. Yeah. I was still crushing it. I mean, you're, you, yeah. You, yeah, like yeah, I was regardless. still like lifting heavy weights. Yeah, like yeah. it's not, I didn't feel that way. Right. But clearly the blood says something right. else. Yeah. So like, what do you make of something like that? Yeah. Sorry. Again. Like, what do you make of something like that? If somebody comes to you and they feel pretty good, but then like their T is still low. You know, it, that's an interesting question. And this is how I always approach it. It's like, I first evaluate the lifestyle, the lifestyle of the person, right? Like, are you getting enough sleep, right? Like Flex said, um, sleep influences your hormones, you know, uh, tremendously. Are you dialed in on your nutrition, right? Are you working out? Are you getting sun? Even sun exposure has an effect on that. So all those things play a factor as well as stress and, you know, how your body produces hormones. But then we also look at, um, you know, age and genetics. Those are also going to play a, a factor in, in how your body produces hormones. So if, you, if we can rule out lifestyle and you've already dialed in those things, um, then you can improve your, your, your markers naturally that way. However, um, you know, seeing that you had low testosterone and you, I, you got on TRT, yep, I'm, I'm yep. guessing you getting on, on, on TRT and, and you notice the difference in your energy, you notice the mm -hmm. difference I'm guessing in your ability to maybe put on some lean muscle mass yep. with your exceptional talents. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, that's where you would go, okay, cool. I, I did need this. Right. So I think person to person, it, it, it changes based on symptoms. Like if you're a guy who has, um, you know, uh, 250 nanograms per, per deciliter of total testosterone, which is very low, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Typically the range is actually between 700 and a thousand to be, to be optimal. Mm -hmm. Um, some doctors will say 500 is optimal. It's not right. But but they're not as well, you know, as studied in this area. A lot of doctors yeah. are studied in, in, in hormones. And let me add to that because this was the problem was I got tested and then he's like, yeah, I mean, you're still in range. 300 to 900 is that's crazy range, to me. right? That's crazy to me. And well, and I was like, oh, well, okay, that's the doctor. And so I've had multiple people tell me the same thing ever since I've been public about sharing my health journey. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, my doctor's telling me it's fine and they won't give me TRT or they won't yeah. like they, they just say you're yeah. good. Yeah. And I, then I talk to guys like you and I talk to other doctors, by the way, right? right? Cause you're not a doctor. I'm not, but they're like, nah, bro. Like you should be at 700, like you said, 700 to a thousand. Yeah. And, um, it's just, you know, it goes back to everything in life standards, right? right. Yeah. Because somebody once said, oh, well, 300 is pretty good for a male. Right. And, you know, somebody also created a body mass index, right. which makes no B sense. BMI, which yeah, <laughs> like, if, if you have muscle, technically I'm obese Yeah, at, at my current weight, 
with my with my height, I'm obese because of my how much I weigh, but it's it's all muscle, right? I, I'm, yeah. My body fat's low, but my BMI is high, but yeah. I'm not at risk for disease. Exactly. So somebody just decided one day, this is a standard I think is is, is how people should be judged. Yeah. The same thing is true with testosterone, right? Yeah. So then, you know, I start talking to other guys like, nah, bro, you are not an average person. Right. You are a high performing entrepreneur, right. you know, guy on stage. Right. Like yeah. you need to exert way more energy yeah. than a normal person. So no, you're not okay. And I was like, all right, that makes sense. So let me let me ask you then, because you didn't feel at the time maybe that you were um, not optimized hormonally, but then you got on TRT. Um, what differences did you see after you you started? Okay, so I'll, I'll explain my journey so everyone knows. Um, when I first got that result at like 300, I was still in a negative mindset of drugs and TRT and stuff like that. Um, because you know, I came up playing pro sports. So for me, I'm like, these guys are cheaters. I ain't doing that. Right. So I said, all right, I'm going to try and raise my testosterone naturally. Naturally. Right. So I went on Amazon <laughs> and I bought like a hundred dollars of supplements a month. So I was taking like DHEA, tart cherry, uh, pregnenolone, ashwagandha, ashwagandha Ali. Yeah. I was taking, uh, yeah. Vitamin D and K, a yeah. multi, uh, a you're fish doing oil. everything you should have to optimize your hormones naturally. Yeah. yeah. And by the way, I was never taking any of that stuff for years. I didn't take any vitamins for years. So I started taking that and that actually got it to 500. So I was like, wow, okay, well, but here's the thing at five, even taking all that, I, I felt no difference. It did not feel right, from any 300 difference. to 500. Got it. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, all right, whatever. So then I get my blood. Well, so obviously I got my blood tested again after doing Smart. that. And I was like, oh, it, it raised. And they're like, yeah. So they're like, this is pretty much where it's going to That's be. That's the top for you. Yep. Yeah. They're like, there's nothing else you could do. And I said, okay, so what's next? And they're like, well, you could do TRT um, and you're going to be on it the rest of your life. And I was like, I don't know about that. I wasn't mentally there. Right. And they're like, well, we could try you on something called Clomid. And I was like, all right, well, what's Clomid? And so they explain it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, whatever. I'll try it. So I do it. Yeah. And it gets it to like 800 and, but it, it drops some other marker. I think it was your IGF. It drops yeah. because it's like a fertility thing. Estrogen as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It dropped a bunch of other things, but mm -hmm. the T went up and truthfully, once again, I did not feel a difference. It was like, it didn't really impact me. I wasn't like putting on more muscle. Yeah. I was like, and you're a taking like a, a, a drug that is not specifically, um, testosterone, right? Because ultimately TRT is, it's what your body makes. You're just putting it anyway. Anyways, More of it. You, yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. So, you know, whatever I did it for a couple of months and right. I was like, this sucks. So I go back to him and he's like, all right, well, the, the next level is TRT. And he's like, so, you know, do you want to inject? Do you want to do a cream? Do you want to do whatever? And he was like, I do a cream. And I was like, all right, I don't really want to inject. I'm scared of needles. I always have been. Like, dude, if you ever watch me in the doctor's office giving blood, I am, dude, get I pale. get clammy. Yeah. I've almost passed out before. It was bad. So anyway, I'm like, give me the cream. So then I do the cream. And um, dude, once again, I did not really feel anything. It's not super efficacious. Yeah. And, and they told me that. And then finally, some other guy, like who was actually like super jacked, he's like, bro, no. Okay. <laughs> if you're going to do it, you just go all in. You got to yeah. inject. Right. Yeah. And I was like, all right, whatever. So I go to a new doctor and um, he gives me TRT to inject. Plus, I learned about peptides and other stuff. And so they give me, you know, let's just say I don't even it was like five at once, five different things. So I went right. from, you know, basically just one thing yeah. to saying, you know what? He said, go all in. I'm going all in. Yep. So I did five. Yep. One of which was TRT. Bro, within days, I was like, holy crap. I feel like... Uh, I'm about to go mess some people up. Like I'm going to supercharged. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I feel good. Yeah. And everybody in the office was like, bro, you're, I didn't have like roid rage, but no, they were no, like, no. you're, you're intense. Yeah. Like you're like focus and right. intensity is yeah. way different. Yeah. And I was like, this is how I used to be back yeah. in the day when I was busy busting fools up in Dude. baseball. Let's pause real quick. We just launched something new that I'm really excited about, which is our text hotline. It is now easier than ever to get in touch with myself and my team. If you've ever been thinking about working with us in any way, whether it's through real estate investing, learning how to create content or scaling your business, we want to help you out. And it's super simple. All you got to do is just text 
5244. If you text that number, my team is going to get in touch with you right away. And I, in fact, might be responding to some of those texts as we get the system just built out and rolling. We can answer any of your questions for getting you help, telling you about our different programs, different events we've got coming up, different resources that we have that can help you. It's going to be epic. So just text us at 725 444 52 Four, four, and somebody will respond to you and get you help right now. I love that because you were so used to operating at your baseline, which other people saw as a high level. And you also were, you know, performing at a high level. But then when you actually optimized yourself in totality, you were like, this is how I should be feeling. Mm -hmm. That's amazing, dude. Yeah. Seriously. So I was like, whoa, this is different. And yeah. then um, literally within a month, I put on 15 pounds. Yeah. And I did not change really much like i right. ate a little bit more right but yeah. the workouts were the same and i was like okay yeah i i understand now how these guys right <laughs> get yeah. jacked really quick yeah yeah but yeah. Anyway, i wasn't even taking like steroids or anything well people yeah. call trt yeah steroids but did, did you notice a difference in your sleep at all yes i did actually so that was the big thing flex and i first talked about was right. sleep yes because i don't sleep a lot so i Mon monty told me by the way Oh, he told you? Yeah. yeah. yeah so yeah, I, yeah. I did an aura ring because yeah. I was like, you know what? I'm going to track everything. Yeah. So I had an aura ring and it was like, you're sleeping five to six hours a night. Yeah. But here was the thing. It was like, your deep sleep is insane. My deep sleep was like two hours. So it was still really high for recovery. Before TRT. Before. Okay. Yep. And then, so I was still like recovering and functioning. I just didn't have long sleep. I didn't have any REM sleep essentially. And uh, how long were you in bed for? I go to bed instantly. So like I wasn't tossing and turning or anything. I just I would go to bed at like 11 and I'd wake up at five. Got that it. That was just yeah. my routine. Right, right, right. But it, yeah, I've never had like insomnia. Would you feel rested? I feel fine. Yeah. Yeah. Like I didn't feel like I I naturally woke up. It's yeah. not like I woke up and like, dude, friggin yeah, I'm dead. So anyways, I got used to it. And then um, when I started doing TRT and stuff, I actually started waking up earlier. It was weird. I didn't sleep longer. But I woke up earlier just naturally and I was like, I feel good. Like, let's just go. Right. It was yeah. weird, dude. Yeah. It, it So <laughs> the optimized testosterone uh, in, increases uh, REM sleep. Uh, when mm -hmm. you have optimal testosterone levels, you're able to get deeper sleep. Got so it. you will feel more rested. Typically, also people report um, before starting testosterone, if they don't dream, when they start testosterone, they start dreaming. And that means you're in deeper REM sleep. I never used to dream and I do dream more now. Isn't that wild? 100%. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So I'm going to get that. That makes me think I'm going to get an aura ring again and just start tracking and to again. see where it's at now versus where it was. That would be interesting to see. Actually. Yeah, because yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So I'm going to do that. Yeah. But Anyways, so I go on that journey for, I mean, now I've been on it for about six months awesome. and um, I'm in the best shape of my life. You look uh, great, dude. Thank you. You look good. Yeah. So my diet is definitely more locked in. I am counting my macros. I'm getting mm -hmm. my workout, but my workouts are still similar to what they've always been. Right. Yeah. Um, ever since I was playing sports, it's it's always been just kind of lower volume, high weight. Yeah compound lifts mind, mind to muscle connection yeah like I, i've never done like crossfit or like these right. high intensity workouts right. i yeah. just want to be strong yeah and, um, feel, and, and feel good too right like not yeah. be locked up and all tight and injured yeah no and, i want to yeah. be flexible so right. i can golf yeah uh, I, I don't do cardio um so yeah that's that's kind of like been my journey the last Love two that. years so you know i'm just curious like uh, for me just so ever that's so everyone has context of how it played out for right. me. right no yeah, yeah now great. had i now that I know what I know, what right. I would do is I'd be like, hey, you know, go to a guy like Michael, just right. get started right now. Just right. accept that. Hey, you know, if your TR, if your, your testosterone's super low and stuff, you're going to be, be on TRT anyway. Don't right. like it took me a year to finally come to grasp that. Right. Hey, this is OK. Yeah. Like I'm going to be on it. Right. And how much you were missing that you didn't know you were missing from your like your energy, your ability. Yeah, to, like, I didn't know what I was missing out be on sharp, which is incredible, dude. Like imagining you because you've been crushing it for the past 10 years mm -hmm. and you're telling me you feel better than you ever have. That's, oh, dude. Yeah, that's, I, I'm that's like insane. in the last yeah. four to six months, I'm like, oh, yeah, but your diet people but don't your, know but your diet is good. Yeah, so I actually have a question for you with with your diet. Do you eat that way because of aesthetics and the way you look or do you eat that way because of the way you feel or both great question um i would say i eat that way because i've just always eaten that way okay 
I wouldn't say I know that it makes me feel better or worse because I don't know any other way. Got it. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I just am like, yeah, I've always been told have at least one gram of protein per body weight. And you were an athlete. So that, that, that makes sense kind of transitioning. You know, it's not like, you know, you were an athlete and then you kind of just keep kept those same eating did, habits. Yeah. I've just kept my same workouts, my same eating do you habits. Eat, do you eat out? All the time. Yeah. Yeah. How, like you and your, you and your wife have date nights. Yep. How often? Well, <laughs> date nights every Friday, sometimes Saturday. Okay. And then eating out is freaking probably like once a day. So uh, when you're doing date nights, are you guys going out to, to restaurants? Yep, yep. And what, like, what do you typically get? Like, what is I it, get whatever what, I want. So I you, you go crazy like once a week. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. I, Same here. Yeah. I drink. I mean, I don't drink a lot. Like yeah. I'll drink, I probably drink, uh, let's just say two glasses of, well, gla however you want to define it, two glasses of alcohol, whether yeah. it's wine or a cocktail yeah. or whatever. Got right? it. Got it. Yeah. So I'd probably do that once a week. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Keeps you I, sane, keeps you sane and you get to spend time with your, with yeah, your Yeah, I just yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. Um, I don't, you know, I've not, well, <laughs> I don't know if you're going to call peptides and stuff drugs, but I don't do any, I've never done recreational drugs or anything like that. Um, I don't smoke. I don't, so I've never done any of that. Yeah. Um, so alcohol would be the only like, I guess, negative thing yeah. that yeah. I'm putting in my body. The reason I ask is like, you're basically following like the 90, 10 rule, right? Which is 90% of the time you're eating, you know, healthy, you're, you're, you know, tracking your macros, you're dialed in, but then 10, 10 of the time you're enjoying yourself, right? You're not putting any restrictions on, Hey, we're going to go to this nice restaurant. I'm going to have the bread and butter. I'm going to have some steak. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to have an appetizer, maybe, you know, a cocktail and for that reason, you're able to keep your sanity while you're living this lifestyle and still be able to enjoy yourself occasionally as well, which I think is great. I think that's optimiz That's true optimization because I think a lot of people, what they end up doing is they get on these like fad diets or they get on these restrictive diets and that's why they always yo-yo. And I see this with entrepreneurs because as entrepreneurs, we're naturally very extreme, right? Like we go, we go deep into whatever it is we do um, and it's good to be disciplined, but there's a point to where if you're too restrictive or extreme in an area, you'll have the opposite effect and a bounce back. So I think it's awesome that you've been able to find that balance. And, and, you know, that's kind of like as well, so, what I try to teach. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about that. So how do you, cause obviously I was already disciplined right. going into it. Right. Right. So what do you do when somebody's not, let's just say they're, you know, they're out of shape obviously. Right. And so, yeah. you know, you're, you, like a guy like me, you're coming in and like, okay, dude, we're going to make some tweaks. We're and taking like, you to the next level. Yeah. Right. So I have clients like you that come in that are like, Hey man, I just want to hit that next level. Like I'm already, I'm already decent, but I yeah. know I could be better. And exactly. I'll even call them out. Like, bro, if you have, if you're, imagine if we dial in your habits more, like you're already a high achiever, we're going to take you to the next level. And that's what's reported, right? They, they feel sharper. They have more energy. They're able to perform, right? Especially as a leader, that's important. But I, I also work with like high net worth people and guys that are leaders and making a ton of money who are undisciplined when it comes to their health, right? Mm -hmm. They're out of shape. You know, they prioritize their business and their money and they make an excuse as to why they're not, you know, um, putting time into their health because they make so much money. Like mm -hmm. I, I literally talk to people like this on a, on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. That being said, I, what I ask them is, and just like, you know, with, with where you're at, I, I take it deeper and I say, you know, Hey, so, uh, like, what's your, what's your purpose? Like, why, why are you neglecting your health? And they're like, well, I, you know, I, I got lazy. I got complacent. I was like, is complacent a word that you would describe somebody who impacts other people? Mm. And then, you know, they would say, no, definitely not. Okay. So that's a little selfish, isn't it? So I would kind of bring it back to them and make them start questioning the reason why they're not focusing on an area of their life that has a massive impact on themselves and the other people around them because of their habits. And they're like, holy crap. And when you get that perspective change, then it's easy for me to give you the habits, right? It's very, it's, it's much harder if you just tell someone, hey, I want you to get healthier. I'm going <laughs> to give you this diet. But if you don't have a reason to do it, yeah. you're not going to do it. So I always, I, I, the, one of the first questions I ask somebody when I get on the phone is like, hey, why do you want to do this? As much as I want to work with you, I want you to want it. Yeah. I want you to want it as well. Yeah. Cause I can make you the best plan, but right. you ain't going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So I establish a purpose up front. Yeah. So I guess with these people, right, let's just say they're out of shape and severely. Okay? Right. Um, like you were saying, you're like, well, you've created an optimized diet where it's very sustainable. Correct. They have not. No, they have not. <laughs> so what, right. they're, they're pretty much going into full right. crash and burn mode. Yeah. Yeah. Like right. you got it. Yeah. 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 I mean, dude, I, I literally talk to like sales leaders. I talk to like high level people that don't have that dialed in. I'm like, bro, you don't know how much you're leaving on the table, right? Like you in the last six months, you, you said you feel better than ever. Like 
I can only imagine where you're taking things from here just based on the way you feel. And I know based on, this is my own personal experience. This is why I love working with entrepreneurs because I am one, right? Yep. Part of the reason I'm so dialed in on, on my personal habits is because it does influence the way I feel, right? It, it impacts your business. It impacts my business and I influence the people around me. Like my mom, she's 63 years old and I helped her to stop smoking cigarettes. I helped her to stop drinking alcohol and she's in the best shape of her life. How did you get her to change her mindset? Honestly, um, she came to me. I, I think some people have to have like, um, they have to come to it on their own volition, right? They need like, a low point usually. Th there's usually something that happens. There's a low point or they just have that emotional, something emotional happens. And that's when people typically reach out to me on, on Instagram, right? They see, they see, you know, somebody I've helped transform and they're like, wow, that's where I am right now. And that's where I want to go. Or they have something, a health scare happen, right? I've had that with a couple of clients that they're like, Hey man, like I had this health scare. I, I know that I need to make a change. And, uh, I think that happened with my mom. I think she was starting to get older and, and, you know, and, uh, she realized if she didn't make that change, she was going to feel and look the way she was. So she came to me and I was like, cool, if you're committed, um, I'm going to help you. And then, you know, she's 63 now and she looks better than she did at, at 53. And, um, you know, my, 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 my point to that is, you know, you can, you can change your life, uh, but you, you first have to make the decision that you want to change. If you haven't heard, WealthCon is coming back to Las Vegas April 18th to the 20th, and I believe it's going to be our biggest one yet. We're going to try and fill the Caesars Palace with 2,000 top-level real estate investors and entrepreneurs. I've got amazing speakers like Neil Patel, Tim Grover, Dan Martell, Pace Morby, and many others coming, and it's going to be great. So if you want to get tickets today, we got some special deals going on. All you got to do is text me at 725-444-5244. We'll get you info on what kind of tickets we got all the way from general admission to our diamond level tickets where you're able to network with the speakers, go backstage, ask them questions, and then have a dinner with all of us in a really intimate setting. It's going to be great. So if you want to get tickets, text me at 725-444-5244. Yeah, there has to be a greater reason why because yeah. it's hard. Yeah. It's hard to change. Yeah. You know, I think that once you get there, you know, because I, I'm, I'm assuming that let's just say somebody comes to you for a 90 day plan, right? right. And yeah. maybe they're not like so far away that like, okay, in 90 days, we can actually get them where they want to be. Right. right. Now, yeah. somebody who's severely obese and out of shape, they're going to be a long right. process. And, and that's something I do as well is like, I'll look at where somebody is and I'm realistic. Like yeah. I'm not, I'm not like a, like if somebody comes to me and like, Hey man, I want to work with you for eight weeks. I'm like, no, you need more. Yeah, no, I, I'll, I'll tell because I'm like, I'm not going to have a big enough impact on you in eight weeks. It's not that I, you know, it, so if a guy comes to me and, and he's, you know, 40 pounds overweight, I'm like, hey, man, we're going to need, you know, probably closer to six months, yep. you know, because I want to also while we do this, create sustainable habits. Because what most people do is they're watching Instagram reels, they're watching TikTok, and they're getting information on, you know, carnivore diets, on if it fits your macros, on, yeah. you know, uh, plant-based diets. There, you know, a new documentary just came out. So dude, um, are you a vegan believer? Uh no, dude. I'm 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 a believer of a nutrient dense diets, uh nutrient dense diet that um includes meats and plants, animal based okay. diet and plants as well. Um, right, I was going to kick you off the show. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not anti, I'm not anti, um, anti nutrients, right? Like I believe we should have everything in our diet. Right. Yeah. And I've been able to replicate that, you know, with my own personal journey and I've anecdotally seen it with all of my clients. Well, I just think like these guys on social media, they, you know, extreme gets clicks. That's it's, it's all marketing, right? We know that I just had this conversation. They're like, somebody was like, Hey, what do you think about the carnivore diet? Um, you know, uh, there's a couple guys that are really big on social media that are marketing it. And I think it's great because you're, you're, you're influencing people in their health, right? So them eating the carnivore diet is much better than the traditional Western diet that you see nowadays, <laughs> which is fast food, every meal, you, you know, you're Pancakes going out and getting, breakfast. yeah, you're getting, uh, you know, a pastry from Starbucks, then you're getting Chick-fil-A for lunch and you're finishing the day with McDonald's, right? And in between that, you're drinking energy drinks. A better alternative is the carnivore diet. So I, I do think there's some positive there. However, just like with any diet, it's a calorie restriction method. Yeah. If you're not eating pastries from Starbucks and you're eating steak and eggs instead for breakfast, you're going to be in a calorie deficit and you're getting micronutrients. Now, the reason that's being, uh, you know, popularized is because it's marketable, right? And, uh, you know, it's, it's much harder to market. Hey, I'm going to give you a diet that has, you know, both uh, meats and, and plants and, you know, uh, healthy fats. Uh, but that's really the sustainable approach that that's, I, I think, more workable for most people. That's how I feel about intermittent fasting. 
Because people will be like, yeah, you know, there's like all these benefits and you might get into ketosis and all these things. And I'm like, no, it works because you're just skipping like one or two meals and right. you're, yeah. you're just eating it's, less. <laughs> it's interesting because like I'll have a, a client that I do a consultation with, like a new client. And they'll be like, yeah, so, I, you know, I do a version of intermittent fasting. I'm like, so what's that look like? I just don't eat breakfast. I'm like, so you're unintentionally fasting and calling it intermittent fasting. Like that's just a, an excuse for you to not be disciplined yeah. uh, because they're not, you know, paying, paying attention to what they're eating for lunch and dinner. Anyways, that's, yeah. but I, I'm in agreement with you on that for sure. Yeah. yeah. You know, cause I, and I've tried them all yeah. I, except vegan cause yeah. I'm not dumb. Yeah. So I, uh, you know, I've tried carnivore, I've tried intermittent fasting. Um, I've tried keto and I've tried them for various times to just see like, is there a true effect? Right. Right. And what I've just realized is, and you kind of said, it's just like, it's just calories, right? Like how yep. many calories did you eat? And right. like, what was the makeup yeah. of those calories? All of those diets are just calorie restriction methods. Yeah. Um, how do you feel? How do you feel about fasting? Like, do you, do you fast? I know I it's like, it's, it's trending right now because of Dana White, right? Oh, did he fast? Uh, uh, Dana White did a, uh, 72 hour fast, uh -huh. um, that was, uh, proposed by Gary Brecca. So uh -huh. Gary Brecca told Dana White, hey, do this 72 hour fast and let's see what happens. He lost like a tremendous amount of, of, of body fat and water weight. And he had this uh, before and after picture that he put on social media. And since that happened, that was like two months ago, I've mm. seen hundreds and hundreds of people, even in my own personal network that mm. did a 72 hour fast. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I didn't know he did that. So Gary's a buddy of mine. And so he's been on the show before. Yeah. And yeah. Um, him and I have talked a lot about just different biohacks and different things, but uh, in regards to fasting, um, I started fasting about two years ago, but for spiritual reasons, I not even that. health related and, you know, health related is just, it's a byproduct of fasting. Right, right. But um, yeah, I mean, I've done multiple 72 hour fast. I've done a five day fast, um, literally no food, nothing but water. It's awesome. And uh, I just completed one, a 30, or, yeah, 72 hour fast, uh, maybe a couple of weeks ago, nice but stuff. yeah, you know what I experienced in the fast, um, outside of the spiritual benefits is I do lose a lot of weight, which is not necessarily what I'm trying to do right now. It's just, it happens. Um, I usually gain it back within a month. Once you reinsert carbohydrates. Yep. So I usually gain it back and I, you know, maybe I do cut a little fat, but I think, you know, the science does say you, you get rid of toxins and it like flushes things out. And so, I think I would agree with it, but I, I usually do about a 72 hour fast every quarter. That's awesome. Yeah. I saw you talking about that in one video. That's why I wanted to talk uh, to do you, you about Do you it. prescribe that to people? I do. Yeah. So I, I personally do a 24 hour fast once a week. I've heard that method too. I, I do it every single week. And the reason is for me, um, occasionally I'll, I'll, I'll play with intermittent fasting, especially when I'm traveling because it's terrible um, to eat when you're flying. So, mm. um, you know, working why? with entrepreneurs. Um, so gut motility is affected by um, the cabin pressure and the elevation. Oh. So when you eat on an airplane, your food doesn't digest as well and it could cause gastrointestinal inflammation. Dude, I've always wondered that because like after a flight. Yeah, dude. You know, and I'm just like, well, I guess I've just been sitting for however many hours and you your know, stomach feels almost stuck if you ate at the yeah, airport. Yeah, like I just feel bloated yeah. and fat yeah. and yeah, dude. So what I do when I fly is every every time I'm flying, even if it's to like Mexico, um, if it's an earlier flight, right, I will wake up, I won't eat. I'll just do coffee, water and electrolytes, um, on the plane, you know, electrolytes, you know, first class, I'm saying no to the meal. I'm yep. not eating that. Typically it's not great either way. <laughs> yeah, um, no, it ain't nothing you know, and if you much. get, and if you get the nuts, they're roasted nuts. So those have, you know, inflammatory seed oils as well. Oh really? Yeah. I mean, there's nothing really, it's hard to find good food at an airport on an airplane. So I'm fasting. And then as soon as I land, I'll have my first meal. And, and typically, you know, not only does that keep me uh, my body composition looking good. I feel better. And you know, when I land, I can have, I can eat whatever I want. So it's the cabin pressure that causes the gut to do that. Cabin pressure and elevation causes poor gut motility, which is your body's ability to, to digest food. Wow. So that can cause gastrointestinal inflammation when you are flying. So electrolytes. So I like to do, you know, electrolytes all day, every day. But at that point, you know, when you're flying, you know, water, electrolytes is the best thing that you could possibly do because you're hydrating your body. Um, and, uh, when you land, you're going to have energy. You're not going to feel bloated. And so I'll prescribe that to a lot of my you know clients. Cause I have entrepreneurs who are traveling on the weekends or they're, or they're going on like a four day trip. I'm like, Hey, if you're going to be traveling, the easiest way to mitigate the possible side effects of a, maybe a high calorie meal or feeling like crap is intermittent fasting on traveling days. And then, you know, while you're on vacation, make sure you're getting your workouts in, you know, you're starting your day the way you would, 
when you're here, that's going to also optimize your energy. A lot of people go on vacation. They wonder why they get sick and they wonder why they, they feel crappy when they get back. Well, they just went from living a super healthy lifestyle to now going off the deep end. So yeah. sustainability is being able to have health as a part of your lifestyle, not just making it something you do for, for four to six weeks, enter, entertaining the carnivore diet or intermittent fasting. Mm. Dude, I've never heard that about flying and I've interviewed a lot of people and nobody has ever said that. And I've always wondered why I feel that way. So that I'm definitely going to do that. Try it next time. Yeah. And, and not only that, you'll feel better than everybody on the flight. Cause you're like, who else on here is doing intermittent fasting? You know, unless I'm on that flight, <laughs> unless I'm on that flight. <laughs> probably, probably nobody else. Um, but yeah, so I, I everyone, everyone in a uh, normal class is doing it. They don't get, they don't get the food. right. Right. Yeah. They're, they're <laughs> not out of choice, not out of choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I like to do a 24 hour fast once a week personally for the mental benefits as well. I feel like mentally it keeps me sharp. It resets your gut health because you give your, your body 24 hours to be able to get out, you mm. know, some of the food that's maybe been sitting there throughout the week. And then, um, um, cell autophagy as well, which is what you explained, right? Like your cells are, you're getting rid of, you know, dead cells. And then your, uh, your body has a process called cell autophagy where you're, uh, producing new cells, healthy cells. Mm. So, so do you prefer to do that versus like a once a month, three day? To be honest, to be transparent, I've never done over 24 hours. Got um, it. You know, talking to you, it, uh, you know, it's something definitely that, you know, I want to try. It's not like I lack the discipline. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, I know that I can do it. It's just not something I've done yet. Um, that's also why I love doing a 24 hour fast. I do feel like it reinstills the discipline behind eating because, you know, a lot of people are, are very hedonistic in the way that they approach their food and they're just using it as pleasure versus like using it for utility. And I think mm -hmm. we could do it for both, but a lot of people eat 90% of the time for pleasure, 10% of the time for utility. Right. And it should be the opposite way. Right. So doing a 24 hour fast reinstills that discipline for me and um, also has all the benefits that, is, that are included. So a lot of my clients, when they're, they're starting with me, they're eating the crappy Western diet, right? They're, they're busy entrepreneurs or they're just, you know, not paying attention to what they're doing. So when you have somebody that hasn't done a 24 hour fast, start to do one once a week, they're like, dude, I love this. I feel incredible. Mm. You know, rarely do you do, does anybody report that they feel negative side effects from doing a 24 hour fast? Mm. So tell me about just like, since we're on the topic of food and then we'll talk about workouts, but like, you said you're, you're a proponent of a nutrient dense diet. What does that mean? So nutrient dense diet would be, you know, um, basically like a high volume diet as well. It'd be called, it's called volume eating. So something like if it fits your macros, right? That diet you're, you're getting prescribed, you know, your protein, your carbs and your fats, you know, exactly what your calories are, how you feel that is, is up to you, right? Yeah. Mine, mine is a mix of not nutrient dense, <laughs> yeah. like ice cream. So, yeah. and, and, and you can do that. And, and that's the, that's the thought process of calories in versus calories out. If you're in a calorie deficit, you can maintain weight or lose weight, right? If you're in a calorie surplus, you'll gain weight. The only issue with not having, you know, the being paying attention to the nutrient quality of the food you're eating is you are missing out on, you know, vitamins and minerals. Mm. Um, and also the food impacts your blood sugar in different ways. And that okay. could affect, you know, how your body loses fat and your energy levels. So, and your satiation as well. Satiation is something that I talk about with everybody, right? Like there's a reason why people start, they starve themselves all day. Cause they're like, Oh, I'm going to go on this low calorie diet. And then they end up giving in at night and eating freaking their face off. They go into the pantry and, you know, eat their, eat their kids snacks and they go into the freezer and eat a pint of ice cream. Well, it's because you restricted yourself so much during the day. So my, in, instead of trying to fight old habits, I tell all my clients, Hey, we're going to implement new habits and we're going to eat a diet that's nutrient dense because it's going to fill your stomach with, with, with food, right? It's foods that are low in calories and, and high in nutrients. So it's going to be denser, mm -hmm. right? Denser, um, you know, a variety of proteins, a variety of carbohydrates, a variety of, of vegetables. And we're going to get, uh, all the micronutrients that we need and vitamins we need to support our metabolic processes, our hormonal processes and keep us full so that we don't want to, you know, go to the kitchen and, and grab something that we shouldn't have. Got it. Yeah. And I've noticed that too, right? When I was, um, doing just different calorie deficit diets, trying to cut up, um, dude, it's just by the keto. The, yeah. Keto, by the end yeah. of the day, you're just like, bro, I am so hungry. Yeah. That cause you eat no carbs. It's not sustainable. That's yeah. the, that's the biggest thing is like, you get can, headaches. You get, yeah. Like you could do keto. Like, like if you want to do keto, that's better than, like I said, eating McDonald's, right? The, the problem is after you get done with this diet, you're going to go crazy and you're going to end up gaining more weight than you, you know, than <laughs> you, you lost you had before. Yeah. That's the, my only, that's my only problem with those. Yeah. You're, those you're all about diets. building a sustainable lifestyle. Yeah. Right. Right. But we can create 
you know, you can also make some tremendous progress in a short amount of time by, by changing your habits. Right. So, yeah. So l- let's just take an example, right? Let's just use me since we have a uh, context, right? I'm probably 188 pounds right now. And, um, I wouldn't mind getting a little bit bigger. I am not like, obviously more muscle. I'm not trying to get like all mm-hmm. bulky, mm-hmm. but like, I wouldn't mind being 195, mm-hmm. you know, still lose some body fat. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know what my body fat is. I haven't gotten measured, but um, if I had to guess, it's probably like 10 to 12%. And, you know, maybe I want to get sub 10 at 195. What would be like the diet you would recommend for me? So your specific diet would be called a body recomp. Okay. okay. So we're losing body fat and we're gaining muscle at the same time, which is possible. Yeah. People think it's not possible, but I, I just experienced it for the first time. Even without TRT. The thing is I work with clients that are on TRT and I work with clients that aren't. Okay. And I've seen anecdotally, despite what science may tell you, that it is possible to put on lean muscle and drop body fat at the same mm-hmm. time. Yep. Now, your body fat isn't turning into muscle, right? That's that's not what what's happening. You are literally burning fat and gaining muscle. And when you're gaining muscle, you're increasing your metabolic rate. What that means is the amount of calories you're burning at rest increases as you put muscle on. Mm. So now that same amount of calories that you were eating in the past actually puts you in a deeper deficit because you have more muscle. How do we do that? That's why I am a big proponent of both volume eating and nutrient dense diets, because when you have a high amount of fiber and micronutrients in your diet, nutrient assimilation is higher. Your body's ability to process protein, protein synthesis is higher. So that same protein you're eating is being now digested and used more readily to build muscle. Same goes with carbohydrates. Now we're breaking down these carbohydrates and they're not being stored as fat. They're being stored now. uh, They're being used as energy. Right. Yeah. And fuel. But that also now, now, now that goes back to like, okay, how's your sleep? Cause if you get poor sleep, you're going to have blood sugar issues, your body's ability to assimilate nutrients goes down. So it's truly the whole spectrum of what are your habits, right? That affects your body's ability to change. Now with the body recomp, with you wanting to put muscle on and lose fat at the same time, I would probably have you closer to, since you already have some muscle, 1.25 grams per pound of body weight. Okay. So you'd be at approximately like, let's, you know, um, it'd be what, like, 225 grams of protein. Yep. That's probably what I'd have you at. And, and then, I don't have a problem doing that. I, yeah. like, I like protein, which is great. And that's not, that's real. that's not hard to get in at your size as, as yeah. a male as well. You get a protein shake in that's 50 grams of protein. You only have 175 grams of protein left. If you do eight ounces of protein per meal, that's approximately 50 grams of protein. So you're going to be able to hit that, you know, within three and a half meals on a protein shake. Yeah. Not, not hard. Um, I sometimes double up and I'll eat a pound of steak at the end of the day just to hit my protein goal. Dude, every, what, every do night. Do you think that I could have too much protein? Is Like, what if I was just doing? No, actually, no? you, you honestly, the only way that it would be detrimental would be with your digestion. Because if you do have too much protein and not enough fiber, you're going to get constipated. Got it. Okay. That's when it would be detrimental. However, unless you, uh, you know, if you're not missing a kidney, your body can process and filter protein very easily. Yeah. Um, even at higher amounts. Right. But, but what does that look like in regards to your macros? I personally, you know, don't go, unless you're a bodybuilder, you shouldn't be eating over 1.25 grams of protein per pound of body weight. It's unnecessary. It's not necessary unless you're Jay Cutler, you know, <laughs> or, on the show. or Flex Lewis, yep, you should that. not be eating more, more than that. That's what I think. Right. And we're trying to be high performers. And if you're bogged down by food in your stomach, your, your stomach has blood in it and that's taking away blood from your brain. So oh, my, Jay, Jay told me how back in the day he would eat 30 eggs every morning. Dude, his Wrong. diet, his diet was insane. Yeah. And he was like, back then I didn't even have the cartons or anything. He's like, I cracked 30 eggs, blended them up and downed it. And he was like, it was brutal, dude. Dude. And brutal. I mean, and he, he looked the part, dude. I mean, he, <laughs> his genetics are insane. And then he had the work ethic and, and, you know, the diet to back it up. And I mean, that's how he became, you know, one of the greatest bodybuilders of all time. So, yeah. but the, you know, not everybody's a bodybuilder. And I think that's, I don't part think of, any of us want to look like a bodybuilder. And, and that's, that's the thing. Right. And I think a lot of diets sometimes are prescribed for more of that restrictive kind of extreme. And, and we want to go at like, okay, how can we implement this diet as part of our lifestyle? Right. And that's like, a big part of like why, why you do it and why I do it. So going back to you, you know, I would also structure your carbohydrates to be probably a little bit higher actually, because you're already at a low body fat percentage. You're 10 to 12% body fat, which tells me that you have, um, good blood sugar regulation, right? You, you don't, you don't have, you're not at risk for type two diabetes, right? Um, and your body's utilizing your food really well. So we can afford to be a little bit higher in carbohydrates. Um, probably around, uh, you know, 225 a day. Um, I like that number for you. And then your fats, if you are trying to lose fat, 
you should always traditionally keep your fats a little bit lower. You don't want to have zero fat because fats are really important for um, your hormones. Your, your fats help with metabolic processes and they make up your hormones. Okay. That being said, if you are looking to lose fat, and you're not an endurance athlete, endurance athletes should have higher fats because it helps them with uh, sustainable energy. Um, your fats should be between, if you're cutting, if you're trying to cut fat, your fats should be between 45 and I would say 75 grams of fat per day. So yeah, what somebody once told, so I was always a um, super low carb, high fat guy. So, you know, cause like I, I had gotten used to like keto and things yeah, like that. Right, and, right. You know, I've also heard that some people's bodies respond better to carbs, some respond Which is better true. to fat. It's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. And so I thought I was always a high fat guy mm -hmm. and I've always liked fatty meat and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, then I talked to bodybuilders and, you know, their, their whole thing is chicken and rice. They're like, no fat, high carb, high yeah. protein yeah. and do that. Right. Right. Now the diet I've been on has actually been pretty similar to what you just said. Right. Um, I started eating way more carbs than I ever have. Right. And it was difficult at first. Yeah. I was like, dude, I am yeah. so full. Yeah. And, you know, basically what somebody told me was they were like, you can't be high carb and high fat. <laughs> that's correct. That's, yeah. that's correct. Because with, with high carb, you're dealing with insulin. And so when you're dealing with insulin, it's working on your cells to transfer nutrients. And if you have high insulin and high fat, now that fat is being more stored as fat easier. Mm. So you got to pick one or the other. Yeah. Yeah. Well, unless you're trying to gain weight and you just pick carbs, then you, you can do high carbs and moderate fat, but I wouldn't go high, you know, 200 grams of fat a day. Like if I wanted to gain ridiculous. more weight, I would just go more carbs and more, more carbs. Weight. Correct. Yeah. I mean, that's going to allow you to not put on body fat. Right. But if you're just like going crazy and you are just trying to gain weight as much weight as possible, you would go high carb and high fat. But if you're just trying to gain muscle, high protein, high carb, moderate, low to moderate fat. So how many calories does that end up working out to what you just for, for you? Yeah. So let's just say for an easy number, 225 grams of, uh, 225 grams of protein times four would be 900. Um, then we have again, 225 grams of carbohydrates. So that's 900. That'd be 1800. And let's just for, uh, you know, numbers sake, let's just say 60 grams of fats. So Fats are nine calories yeah. uh, per gram versus carbs and protein, which is four calories. So nine times uh, 60 would be 560. So 1800 plus 560, we're looking at uh, 2360. And that, the thing is, you're like, no oh, protein. that's not- so that, 2360 plus the 900 No, protein. it'd be 900, 900. So 900 protein, 900 carbs, that'd be 1800 plus 560 would be 2360. Really? Oh, mm -hmm. wow. So it doesn't seem like a lot of calories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, the difference is, brother, number one, you're on TRT. Okay. okay. So your body's ability to utilize those nutrients is much higher. But number two, the nutrient dense nature of the diet increases uh, your body's ability to utilize those nutrients. Now, mm. what I would do is I would say, okay, over the four week period, you're doing resistance training. You're not doing a, um, a lot of cardio, which yep. I maybe wouldn't change because you're already doing that, right? Yep. You're, you're able to maintain 10 to 12% at no zero cardio. cardio. So why would I increase cardio if you're trying to increase muscle mass? And we would say, okay, how is your body changing across a four week period? And if you're able to put on some muscle and lose fat in a four week period on that, those calories. Great. And if you're not, we would increase carbohydrates. Yeah. I think, so I blew up really quickly. Like, you know, I was 180 and I got to 195. Mm -hmm. Then I got sick and I went on a fast. And so then I dropped it back down to like 185. And then now, like I said, I'm like 188. Um, but dude, I, I eat more than 2,300 calories. I know that for a fact. Yeah. And I'm not like gaining like crazy. So yeah. does that mean I'm just burning? I, or, or it's the nutrient quality of your, of your diet. You know, I don't know what you're eating day to day yeah, or your step count is high. So I haven't worked with you. So no, I my know. step count's not high. I sit here in this chair and, but, talk you, to but you may be burning, <laughs> but you're burning calories, but you, it's, it's not just step count that, okay. that, that you burn calories with. Um, there's also non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Mm. And you move a lot. I know. I, I, I've been yeah, watching. No, my, like, it, yeah. and I'm sitting in the chair. Yeah. I move. You're very animated in your movements. You're burning calories from your animations. It's really? called it's it's called non exercise activity thermogenesis. Okay, so you have that. Your your total <laughs> daily ex, you do your total daily energy expenditure could be higher due to your neat. Oh, this, dude, I'm learning a lot. I, like I said, I've had a lot of health experts on, and like I'll hear like you know, whatever, like crazy things that I, yeah. you know, or whatever. Yeah. But these are the things I'm like, that makes sense. Why that happens to me Yeah. versus, you know, whatever. Right. Yeah. Like nobody's yeah. ever told me that yeah. about burning these calories and like, yeah. 
I my wife thinks I'm crazy. She's like, dude, can you just chill out like and sit down? Nah, dude. I love your I love your energy. I'm the same way, dude. I'm all day. I'm I'm going all day. Yeah. 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 So yeah, I'll tell you about the nutrient density since it's not the ah, I'm hard on myself. But like, so for breakfast, I eat, you know, and I'm gonna combine this over a three hour period because I work out. But like on my foodie fit or my uh um, my fitness pal. Fitness pal, yeah. I I have a Chobani Greek yogurt, I have a piece of fruit. I have a weight gain shake with some protein in it too. I have um, a foodie fit meal that's like 500 calories. Which with, one? Uh, it's like the Cali hash. Okay, it's good. Yeah, so it's yeah. just steak and eggs and yeah. hash browns. Yeah, yeah, it's good. So like I eat all of that by nine o'clock mm -hmm. before I get to the office. Mm -hmm. Then at lunch, I have another um, meal prep. It's like 500 calories, mm -hmm. same deal. It's just steak, uh, rice, and you know veggies. Mm-hmm. For my snack in between dinner and, and lunch, I have um, dried mangoes and turkey. Then at dinner. Is this every day? Yes. Well, every day at the office. Uh, yeah, yeah. So you have your routine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, got yeah it. this is pretty much every day. Yeah. And then um, dried, at, mango, dried mangoes. Dude, I love them. I'm dude, Filipino, dude. We I, just love, I love dried mangoes. mangoes. Yeah, yeah. So then at dinner, that's the wild card. There's no, I have no plan for dinner. It's just whatever's there is there. So w w is your wife making food? Are you going to get food? Uh, I would say the majority of the time it's eating out where, wh what would that look like? Well, we either get it to the house or we go eat out, but like I eat Korean barbecue a lot. What's your um, favorite? What's your favorite place here? I'm just curious. Uh, it's just by our house Doma. Okay. So good spot. Yeah. yeah, it's good. Korean um, barbecue. Yeah. So, I mean, it's always super protein heavy. Yeah. I will eat my carbs. Um, you know, there's always a veggie. So it's not like I'm going crazy. Like it, it it's, it's, it's probably more calories than my lunch. But interesting. It's 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 yeah and yeah. Then, but that's not it. So then I have um <laughs> my wait, late night snack. More. <laughs> yeah. So then I do that at, at at dinner. Then I put the kids down, and then I eat a bowl of ice cream. And then I eat a um, egg McMuffin from Foodie Fit. Wait, this is at night. This is at night. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I eat a macro McMuffin. They call them. They're yeah. supposed to be good. Yeah. For anyone who doesn't know, I I I grew up eating egg McMuffins every morning as a kid. So I eat an egg McMuffin. Um, I usually have like a couple of bags of sun chips throughout the day. So like they're right by my desk. And then I also have like gushers sometimes, but well, actually every day. So I'll have a gusher once or twice a day and yeah. a fruit roll up. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's pretty much. I didn't expect a, a couple of those things, but uh, yeah. So that's, no, that that's literally what I eat every day. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So what yeah, do you think they, now? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, I definitely, I definitely <laughs> think there's, there's, there, I don't know, like, I would ask you what your digestion is like, you know, how, how regular are you, you know, how's your digestion? I mean, I, I have bowel movements uh, yeah. at least two times a day. Yeah. So, and then, you know, I would look at, you know, again, I think your thermo, your non-activity exercise thermogenesis is so much higher than you actually realize. It has to be because it, I, I eat that's, like a that's a big part of your total daily energy expenditure. But then I would also look at, you know, Ins your insulin, right? And I don't think you're as insulin sensitive as I thought before, based on what you just told me, because <laughs> you get all the sugar you eat. Because you're eating sugar frequently, so that could also be affecting the way that your body's utilizing your carbohydrates oh. in a negative way. Because yeah, yeah, if yeah. you're insulin resistance, those carbs, instead of being utilized as fuel into your muscles, because carbs are very anabolic, our body's first source, uh, preferred source of energy is carbohydrates, and it influences the way that you can build muscle. But if you have insulin resistance due to frequently eating foods that are higher glycemic, such as processed sugars, then your body's not going to be able to utilize those carbs as well for uh, fuel. Got it. Get, that's why I said like I, I'm somewhat nutrient dense and then I'm not because right. I, I, yeah, I'm hard on myself because I just know I don't have to eat all that crap I just told you at the end. But uh, I mean, my results are still good. So I'm right. just like, yeah, 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 whatever. Yeah. So I, don't I would, know. I would, I would cut out. What is it? Are you eating just regular ice cream? Ube ice cream. Ube? Is it like, is that? It's like, purple. It's it's a Filipino. What's, it's, it's just the best ice from, cream ever. Yeah. It's just it's the best. I like ube, <laughs> but uh, but that would probably be the only thing I, I cut out. Maybe the maybe the fruit roll-ups and gushers too, but. But uh, so, but dude, I look at them. They're, for one, they're so good. Yeah. And they're for my kids, but I eat them. Yeah. Actually, they're not even for my kids. They're for me. Yeah. So, but I look at them and I'm like, dude, it's 80 calories. A fruit roll-up is 50 calories. Yeah. And, and again, like, like whatever. we're talking about calories in, calories out. End yeah. of the day, you're you know, like you said, do you know how many calories that total that your whole day? Well, that's is? why I said, I was like, I eat more than 2,300. I know that. Yeah. I mean, with the, I, I don't, the you're 3, eating 000. a pint of ice cream. No, I don't eat that much. Okay. Not, 
Yeah, you're I mean, probably, you're probably like close. Scoop or two. I think you're close to 2,800 if I had to guess. Close okay. to 28 to 20, 28 to 29. Um, you know, but in that, I would say uh, 20% of that is coming from foods that are going to be Junk. negatively impacting your hormone profile. And insulin is a hormone, right? So let's say I cut those out. Yeah. What will happen to me if I go like yeah. way smarter. Yeah. I mean, insulin sensitivity increases. Your body's ability to utilize nutrients goes up. I think your body fat drops. And I think you, you, for that reason, now that I know about your, your, how much, you know, you're burning from your fidgeting that you yeah, do yeah. and your animations, I would probably increase your carbohydrates a little bit more, Okay, but I would only increase your carbohydrates if you cut out the processed sugars and then you'd probably gain muscle. Do you think that the sun chips are bad or like the dried mangoes? Are um, bad? so the, so, so I don't like to categorize foods as bad, right? I look at, what am I eating and how is it a, how is it affecting me in the regards to how I feel and what's the micronutrient pr profile of that food? If you're eating chips, they're technically uh, or typically hyper palatable, meaning that they are, they taste good. They digest very quickly so that you eat them more. And that's kind of, <laughs> that makes sense. You, you know what I mean? That's why they, they, they yep. sell a lot of them, right? They have a lot of salt, so they're easy to eat, right? They're, they're crunchy. They have that texture um, and they, they typically are coated in, you know, a seed oil of some type that they've been cooked in. I, I'm not sure of the, the, the ones that you're eating, but um, those make them easy to eat, easy to, um, easy to digest, but they're also not high in micronutrients, which makes you want to eat another bag. So do I think that that snack item is the best one for you in regards to the way that you feel internally and externally? Definitely not. And do I think there's better choices? A hundred percent. Yeah. What would I replace it with? Honestly, you know, uh, what, for, like a rice for, cakes for, rice cakes are great. Yeah. And it, dude, honestly, there's a lot of options at like organic food markets. They have healthy alternatives to like, they have chips that are gluten-free chips, you know, Siete, that brand makes Siete, Siete. They seven? make, <laughs> yeah, seven. Yeah. They, they make, okay. yeah. They, and they, uh, they make great gluten-free chips that actually still taste good. You can eat those and they have avocado oil instead of seed oils. So I thought sun chips were my healthy option, but I was, I was mistaken. I, I, no. They're not. Okay. They're not. So Sun yeah. Chips is rating to be a health yeah. option, but it's not. It's not. And so I would check out Sprouts or Whole Foods or even Amazon. Check out this brand. This is not even a plug, but yep. Siete, Siete. Yeah, they have gluten-free chips that are uh, cooked in avocado oil. So they don't have the high inflammatory, you know, same inflammatory, you know, ingredients like seed oils. And, uh, but it's, and by the way, I just want to touch on this. Seed oils, a lot of people, it's a buzzword, right? You've heard, you've heard yep. about it. Yep. Um, inherently, seed oils actually aren't bad for you. But it's the way that they're processed that makes them um, that makes them highly inflammatory to your gastrointestinal tract. So I'm a baseball guy. Are sunflower yeah. seeds bad? Sunflower seeds aren't. No, like seeds in general aren't bad, right? And I think again, it's a marketing. It's all marketing, right? Like right. if you say seed oils, cut out seed oils. Everybody's like, oh, I love this guy, right? But like, I try to cut through the dogma and just like give you the information straight. Like if you had canola oil, organic cold pressed or canola oil, it actually is uh, full of omega threes. Right. So that's not going to be bad for you, but it's the way that they process these seed oils to make them shelf stable, typically found in, in processed food ingredients that makes them highly inflammatory. Got it. OK, so that makes sense on food. Um, I'm going to do a test and try to be more disciplined and cut out some of the bull crap. You'll definitely drop body fat like you'll definitely get you definitely get leaner. OK. Yeah. And I do want to. All right. I'll, Summer's I'll, coming up. I'll cut up the bull crap. Yeah. And I'll, I'll get some Siete and uh, fill my needs. That try, try them, bro. And then they have, they also have like, um, an, uh, like a almond based, uh, dip that you can get too. Oh, that's anyway. Good. So that would be good with like, yeah, chips. I'm yeah. gonna try that. Yeah. So let's talk about workouts. Like what kind of workouts are you a proponent of? I'm a really big fan. And interesting enough, you brought it up of, um, time under tension and, uh, slow negatives or eccentrics. Um, you know, a lot of people are going into the gym and they're just kind of going through the motions um, and uh, they're injuring themselves because uh, they're probably lifting too heavy or ego lifting. I'm a big proponent of doing lighter weight or moderate weight at high volume, but we increase volume, not necessarily by reps, but for the time under tension of each specific set. Right. Mm. So if I'm doing, let's say a bicep curl, right. Uh, let's just say an incline bench bicep curl where I'm seated in a bench and I have two dumbbells in my hands. I could do, you know, 10 reps with let's say 50 pounds and I can get through that set. My form might be compromised at the end. Total time under tension is let's say 15 seconds, or I can drop down to 35 pounds. Okay. I can do 12 to 15 reps with a three to four second negative, which is the lowering portion of the exercise. The total time under tension of that set is now between 45 seconds 
uh, in 60 seconds in a minute total, which yeah. is going to increase my volume, increase the amount of blood that's going to my muscles and decrease my risk of injury, uh, specifically to connective tissues. So that's what I found to be a sustainable approach and a modality that I use for clients. And it, it increases the amount of hypertrophy that you can see from a workout because of the volume, um, in that, in that workout specifically. So, and I've heard of time under tension. And so the way I interpret that for most is like, you're, you're going till failure in a lot of cases. Close to, close to failure. Yeah. yeah. And it's just super slow reps, right? Slow negatives. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I mean, from there, do, do you even need a lot of sets? Like, cause I've heard like you could just do a couple right. and you're so, good. Dude. And that's the crazy part too. People are going into the gym and doing 10 different, you know, exercises. You don't need to do 10 exercises. I can get done what somebody else is doing in two hours with 10 exercises with four exercises. You believe it's just as good. hundred percent. Yeah. Because you're increasing the, the efficiency of your workout because you're really focused, right? But people, people do two things. Either A, they're going in the gym and they're distracted or B, they're lifting with their ego. So put your ego to the side and why not treat the gym the same way you treat the rest of your life is with intention. You go into the gym and you use that time to be able to improve yourself. If you care about the rest of your life and you care about your success, why wouldn't you care about going to the gym and being efficient with your time? Why else are you in there? Are you yeah. in there to, you know, for social hour or are you, are you in there to improve yourself? Yeah. Cause like the first time I ever heard about time under tension was from Tim Ferriss. And he talked about it in this book called the four hour body. Yeah. And it was written like over a decade ago. And he, he was a proponent of that, like just different studies from yeah. decades ago yeah. saying that, yeah. no, this is actually the best way to build muscle. Mm -hmm. Now, call it ego or whatever, but, you know, playing in sports, we never did that, right? We wanted to be explosive. Right. And Training for athletics. For athletics. Yeah, yeah. And so that was always my philosophy of like, hey, let's just, you know, low rep, one powerful movement, because that's what I do come the game. And then I always thought that, you know, the time under tension thing, I could definitely feel my muscles like just getting destroyed. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, this definitely is different than just, you know, some quick reps. Right. And I'm like, I could see why my muscles would probably get bigger through this, but am I actually getting stronger and more like effective as an athlete? So, and that's where you got to decide what you're trying to do. You know, I think your training should be specific towards how you want to look how you want to feel and how you want to perform. Yeah. Cause basically I guess, are you saying that time under tension is like the best way to gain build, build muscle, build muscle and reduce risk of injury. But here's, here's also, um, another positive benefit. Time under tension increases your, your tendon and connective tissue strength, right? So when you're doing time under tension, say I have my elbow joint and my shoulder joint stacked on a, on a, uh, dumbbell chest press. Well, I'm going slow. I'm actually, since I'm not inflaming the joint, cause I'm not going super heavy and I'm using a weight that's like moderate, I'm increasing that tendon strength. So I'm actually improving the health of my body in totality, not just by building muscle, but improving the strength of my tendons and connective tissue by doing time under tension. So I think it's a sustainable modality for long-term health versus, you know, look at Ronnie Coleman, dude, he just tried to max out and, you know, lift as heavy as possible. Now he's, he can't even walk. Mm. I want to be able to lift. I want to be able to exercise. I want to be able to, you know, play with my future kids for the rest of my life and look good doing it. Time under tension is the answer for that. So, and I'm glad you brought that up because when I had Flex and Jay Cutler on, you know, they both said the same thing, right? They're like, dude, we're retired. We are not trying to do what we used to do. And Jay's like, dude, I, I enjoy, you know, hitting the Stairmaster. I enjoy just doing lightweight, Time under tension, you know, it, it maintains the, the aesthetic still. Um, and yeah, it's just, he's like, I'm older now. It's just way less harsh on my joints and everything else. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's like I said, it's like, that's why I'm a big proponent of it. Cause people come to me too, and they've been injured, right? They, they maxed out in the, in the sport they were playing and, and, you know, they hit PRs or they come to me and they were coming from doing CrossFit. A lot of people come from CrossFit and they're injured because they're doing these sets at, you know, 80% of their one rep max and doing cardio in between that. Um, and they're not really focused on the movement. Like, you know, we're going into the gym. We're almost using it as a, as a form of like meditation by being very present with your body as well. So, um, you know, that's what I feel it's superior anecdotally, both with my, with both with my, you know, own personal journey in my fitness and with seeing it, how it's trans 
transformed my clients' bodies, time and retention is superior for hypertrophy and long-term sustainable fitness. So like if you're going to do a time under tension workout, uh, is it full body? Is it like, tell me, uh, walk you know, me through like a Yeah. Workout. I mean, great question. It just depends again on, on what you, how many days a week are you working out, right? If you're working out five days a week, well, then you're going to split your, your, your body parts out, you know, and what do you gonna, recommend for most people? So, you know, what's interesting, right? A lot of people do the, um, you know, chest tricep, back biceps, you know, legs. I actually like to do chest and biceps together. And that's because you're not pre-exhausting, you know, the triceps with the chest exercise. So I do chest and biceps. I do back and triceps again, cause they're two different muscle groups that you're working. You're working back. You're not so you're doing a lot of isolation. Yeah. But so I split up typically my workouts. I'm more intuitive with it nowadays. I just kind of go into the gym and whatever's not sore is what I, <laughs> I I'm serious. You yeah. know, I've been able to do that, but a lot of people can't do that. And a no, lot of people no. come to me and need the structure. So, you know, if you can go to the gym and get gains out of four days a week, but if you're really trying to transform your body, I don't su subscribe to the two to three days a week of lifting the guys that are promoting, um, you know, the two days of lifting or the three days of lifting and be able to get results. Those guys have been lifting for 10 years plus. It's maintenance. If it's maintenance at that point. So if you're a newbie, um, and again, that's marketing. If you're a newbie or if you're somebody who's really trying to change your body composition, I do recommend between four to five days of resistance training, splitting up your body parts into different days so that you can prioritize and pay attention to them. And you're typically looking at between 16 to 20 sets uh, per workout. 16 to 20 sets takes about an hour. And 45 minutes to an hour. You shouldn't be in the gym for your resistance training longer than an hour. Okay. Uh, I, I think that's too, when pe somebody's in the gym for two hours, like, bro, what are you, what are you doing there? So like, let's just say we're doing chest. Yeah. How would that look with time under tension? Yeah. So like, say, so typically, you know, you want to make sure you're doing a warm up set of some, some type, right? So, um, you know, I like to sometimes start with like a cable exercise, right? Cause that's not, um, as stressful on the joints to start with. So warm up with a cable exercise, then I'll go into like a free weight. Okay. The free weight, the first set, I'm, I'm going to get a feel for, for the movement. I'm going to go probably 70% of what I'm going to do in my, my top sets. So I'll get a feel for the movement. I'll, I'll go real slow. I'll contract the muscle on the first set, the second set. Now I'm really going to get into like the weight that I should be using. So if I'm doing, let's say an incline dumbbell chest press, I'm going to be doing, you know, 12 to 15 reps at a four second negative, really focusing on that slow control. And actually you can, you can get a deep stretch when you're doing time under tension because you're not using heavy weight without hurting your joints. And it's a form of what's called active stretching. Mm. So I use my, my, I use my workouts to stretch as well. Wow. I actually don't stretch often Wow. because I use my exercises that I'm doing as a form of stretching through time under tension. Yeah, that makes sense, right? Cuz yeah. you're not going as heavy and you're You can you can get yeah. the full you can get a full range of motion, right? There's so much misinformation. The reason why somebody would stop at a an angle like this is for two reasons. Either A, they have their, their, their shoulders injured, um, or B, they're lifting so heavy that they can't complete the full range of movement. Right, so right. I like, that's why I like time under tension because you're getting full range of movement as well. So I would do chest press. I would do, you know, probably, you know, uh, five sets, one warm up set, and then four sets of the time under tension. My last set, um, or my last two sets, I'll do a drop set. A drop set is when you drop the weight by let's say 30%. And then, um, I'm either doing the same tempo of another 12 reps with a four second negative, or I'm doing a regular tempo of as many reps as possible with 30% less weight. So with time under tension, you're basically saying it's 60 seconds. There's no reps. So it, you're not looking at, no, no. So I'm not looking at the, Hey, this set needs to be 60 seconds, however long the set takes, but typically, yeah, your set's not going to be 15 seconds long. That's the difference. A typical person going into the gym, they're lifting weights, they're each set. And you watch, I watch guys in the gym do this, nothing against it. Right. I'm happy they're there, but they're doing a bicep curl, a barbell curl for 15 seconds. And then they're on their phone for three minutes. I'm that guy. 100%. Yeah. That guy. It's just, and, and here's the thing you're, 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 you're maintaining, but you're not necessarily ma making gains. I, I is agree it, with you. Is it better than nothing? But if you're trying to maximize, and that's why, like, again, I've been able to create these pillars in my program that have created transformations in a short amount of time because we're being you're intentional. Very, I'm very intentional, right? And that's the word that I like to use. So, you would say like what eight reps or something, but time under tension. So it's going to be a long, set. yeah, you could do eight, you could do eight reps at five to six seconds under tension as well. Right. So yeah, that's, you could do seven seconds under tension, right? Like that's so what's when you fun say about seven it. seconds under tension. I'm basically going one, two, three, yeah. four, you know, five. Yeah. Six, and bro, seven. And, and it's, and then is it like one back up? So then you'd go one second on the way up. Yeah. So yeah. one second on the way up and then maybe just a very slight pause, but at the bottom, we're just going zero, zero. So, and that would be, you know, a tempo of seven, zero, one, one. Yeah. One, one, 
seven zero. zero. Yep. Yeah. One one. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I can see why that. Uh, so there's a science results. behind. There's a yeah, science yeah, yeah. behind it. You know what I mean? But yeah. that's that's the majority of what you recommend for everyone. 100. percent Yeah, for hypertrophy and for long term health, right? Like, I'm if if I tell somebody coming into my program, hey, I'm gonna have you doing hit workouts the first month, and they're coming to me and they're like their body's inflamed and they're stressed out the hit workouts are going to probably injure you, right? Like <laughs> I'm not a, that's why I like boot camp weight loss programs. They work because you're burning calories, but are they sustainable? No, you can't do boot camp classes for the rest of your life. Right. You know? So do you ever like, I guess, prescribe just pure cardio to people or it's always going to be resistance training? Resistance training is by far the best exercise modal modality that you could possibly perform. Why do people think that running and stuff is good? Well, you're burning calories, right? So, you know, I, I think it's, it, it boils down to like people revert back to what's the easiest. Oh, I can go running and it's mindless and I can burn calories, but is it the most efficient metabolically speaking? No, right? Because when you are doing long distance running, you're actually paring down muscle, right? So that's why you see marathon runners or long distance runners, unless they're a high, like uh, a freak of nature or a hybrid athlete that used to be a bodybuilder, they typically don't have a lot of muscle on them. Yeah. They look skinny fat, right? And the reason for that is when you're doing long distance running, you are sending a, a, a signal to your central nervous system in your body that you don't need that muscle because you need to be slimmer and lighter so that you can run long distance. Mm. Um, and the amount of cortisol and stress from running is so much higher than, um, you know, than time under tension, or let's say a different form of cardio, which would be low intensity, steady state cardio. What right. So low intensity steady state cardio where is where your heart rate would be in what's called zone two, which is 70% of your max heart rate. So that type of cardio is going to be much less stressful. You're not going to release uh, as much cortisol as you would from running. And you're not going to pare down muscle tissue in the same way you would with running. So a lot of bodybuilders, Jay Cutler, Flex, Flex Lewis, or even people that are just working on maintaining muscle while losing body fat or gaining muscle are doing low intensity steady state cardio. So this is, I think, the only cardio I ever do. Would this just be like the incline walk for 30, 30 minutes? You got it, brother. Yeah. So okay. I, I'm a big proponent of walking outside, you know, walking on an incline treadmill or even Stairmaster as well. I think they're, you know, great um, cardio modalities because they're not stressful on your joints. You can do it every day. You can improve your cardiovascular health while losing body fat and maintaining or gaining muscle as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anytime I did do cardio, that's all I ever was never like, but what about like sprints and stuff? Sprints are great, dude. I, I love uh high intensity interval training. If you're healthy, if you don't have any injuries, um, sprints are a great way to both burn body fat. And actually you can, you know, build muscle from doing high intensity interval training, like sprints. Um, uh, you know, people have been like, dude, how'd you build your quads? Cause my legs are, my legs are jacked. And I told them two things, sprints and barbell squats. Mm. So I, I, I got into sprints, you know, when, uh, when I was playing football and then I used it as a cardio modality to lose body fat when I was doing bodybuilding competitions. Yeah. And I, dude, I like, it's one of my favorite forms of cardio because it is, it's, it's tough. It's really, you know, it's tough, but it, it can build your abs. It can, you know, build your quads and you could burn fat super efficiently. So I love sprints. I think they're great. You have to make sure that you're doing them either on grass or uphill to protect your knee health. Um, but yeah, I think they're great. Do, do you, um, ever max out on my lifts? Yeah. No, mm. No, I don't, I don't do one rep, one rep maxes. What's the point? Like, I don't, <laughs> I, don't I don't, if somebody flex asks me to flex, <laughs> yeah, but I don't care though. Cause yeah, yeah. I, cause I, I know I, I look better than most people in the gym and yeah, I don't yeah. care. I don't care if you, I don't care if you lift more than me. I right. really don't like, I, I would rather have my health. Right. You know, you know what I mean? So me doing a one rep max for squat, I've done it once. Um, but okay, well, well, what is it? I need to know now. It was three fifteen. Okay. Yeah. I, but I, I don't care. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I, yeah. I, I did it. I did, I think two reps of three fifteen. I was like, cool. I don't want to be in the 500 club. Um, you know, my, I can, I can do two twenty five. you know, 15 to 20, 20 times on bench press. Like yeah. I'm strong. I know I'm strong, but I don't, I don't want to tear my rotator cuff. You only got, you only got you two, only got one, two you, of them. You got two rotator cuffs. Once those are gone, you know, you see these guys they are like, yeah, I tore my shoulder. That's why I can't do this. I don't want to be one of those guys. All right. Maybe I'm going to stop with my heavy lifts, dude. Cause I, uh, I'm under tension, bro. I know. I'm, I'm telling gonna, you, I'm going to switch it up because let's do it. Dude, I've just been like, you know what? I want to be the strongest pound for pound. Yeah. For no reason. There was yeah. no, no reason behind it. But yeah. I got to, um, doing 315 for five and I was like, on bench. Yeah. Bro, that's strong. That, that was my goal. I'm, I'm just serious. Like, I want no, to that's, pound that's, for pound. Super strong. That, that's honestly super strong, bro. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that was my only goal. But Good job. I don't look 
better than everyone else. So that's the thing. That's the different training for strength and training for health and aesthetics are two different things. Exactly. And yeah. Power lifters are like some of the, like they can, can't turn their body at all. And that's <laughs> like with you playing golf, bro, like you should not be maxing out on your lifts. Cause it's, it, it could cause some restriction in, in your thoracic spine. All right. I'm going to do time under tension <laughs> and then I'm going to be hitting it 400 yards. Just let's like, go dude. All right, guys, look. And then my golf swing is going to be time under tension. It's just like, dude, <laughs> so I'm, I'm honestly, I, if you have been doing like four to five rep maxes occasionally and yeah. frequently, and you switch over to time under tension, I think you will notice a difference in your mobility and your golf swing. Mm. All right. All right. Just give me a plan and I'll do it. <laughs> I got you, dude. So, okay. Last question with entrepreneurs, right? So I think the biggest uh, hurdle these guys have is number one, they're like, all right, first off, I don't know what to do. Right. And so we're telling them, Hey, you know, go to you, get a plan in place. We're going to get your workout plan, food plan. You know, we're going to get blood work. We're going to do all those things to make sure that we get you the optimal plan for you. But inevitably it leads to the second question of, okay, well now that I have the plan, how do I execute? Right? So how am I going to get all this food and meal prep? How am I going to, when am I supposed to work out? How do you simplify that process? Well, th that's my job, right? Like, yeah. you know, you know what I mean? And I tell people this, you can go on chat GPT right now and type in what's the optimal diet for somebody who's, you know, 180 pounds at six feet tall that, yeah. you know, uh, works out this many times a week. It'll shoot you out of diet. The, diff the, the problem with that is, you know, you don't have somebody to hold you accountable. You don't have somebody to adjust, you know, your, your macros or adjust your program and chat GPT isn't going to read your blood work. Right. So <laughs> yet or, or yet, yet or, <laughs> or help you create a schedule. So that's what I do as you know, I, I basically break down, Hey, what are we currently doing? What are your habits? You know, what purpose can we put behind making this easier and executable? And let's create a schedule for you. Let's let me put a plan in place. All I need you to do is, you know, be disciplined and execute on this, but I also want to make it a part of your lifestyle. So it's not, you don't feel like you, you know, want to eat your arm off or, you know, go to a buffet, you know, once a week, you know, the goal is to create a lifestyle out of this and, and make it something that you can sustain because you see the benefits that it's having in your life, right? Mm -hmm. Like you have more energy, you know, you, you're able to be there for your family. Um, you're able to execute on a higher level in your work because you don't have brain fog, brain fog from drinking copious amounts of, of caffeine and energy drinks and, you know, uh, highly processed foods. Um, and then you have an impact on other people because they're inspired from your journey. So yeah. that's where I see, you know, the massive benefit from, you know, diving into improving yourself and not being complacent with your health just because you're making a lot of money or other parts of your life are. are yeah. And I tell up. people this too, like, you know, when, it, okay, let's just, you know, we're entrepreneurs, right? Entrepreneurs naturally want to improve. Okay. And so when you look at improvement, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm very clear that improvement is not just about making money. It's about health and faith and relationships as well. That. I love that. But let's even take that out of it. And right. let's just say, hey, your focus is making money. Right. All right. How can you make more money? Well, there's lots of ways to do it, right? You can, all right, maybe I'll go learn marketing. Maybe I'll like just work more hours and, uh, okay, the personal trainer guy, I'll just take on more clients. Right. You know, right. that's the, I would say, dumb way to do it. It's just like very low level thinking. Right. Work harder, or not smarter. Yeah. It's right. not innovative. Right. Yeah. It's like, I'll just work more. All right. Well, you're dumb. Right. So, how about we think outside the box and say, well, okay, well, actually, how could I, you know, build the business in a better way? Like, well, there's multiple things. Like I said, you could market, you could change the product, but a big one is, well, what if you improved your health, right? Let's just say you're operating at 50% of your potential right, right now. Yeah. Okay. As a leader, as whatever it is you do, right? Like, okay, yeah. man, I got to write all these, these plans and emails right. and, yeah. Yeah. you know, whatever. And you're only able to get half of what you could have got done because you're out of shape. Massive. Right? Massive. Or if you're like me, if I was out of shape, right, the amount of content I put out, I couldn't put it out. I just wouldn't have the physical energy. I would have the brain fog. I couldn't right. think clearly. Yeah. I couldn't articulate. I can only do what I do because I'm in shape. So imagine if I was out of shape, like I'd be at 50% of right. what I could do. Yeah. And all I had to do was change one thing. I just had to get healthier. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So- I think for anyone here, if you are currently like, you know, if, if you can't see your abs, let's just use that analogy. Right. Yeah. If you can't see your abs, you are operating at a level that's 50 percent far yeah. below what yeah. you could be, even if you changed nothing in your business. So even with that, it's like you don't even have to innovate and think of new ideas. Just get healthier 
your business will increase. And then probably you're going to think of new ideas because you actually can think. Create creativity. Yeah. I think that's huge. And I think it's also like <clears throat> having a carrot to chase. I think like that's a big thing too, is like entrepreneurs, like we always have to set a goal, right? And we, when you don't have a goal in your health and say you're already going to the gym, you're just going through the motions. You're not waking up with purpose. I love waking up every single day with a purpose in my, in my business, in my health, in my relationships. And by having a plan in place and by having a goal set, it gives you that drive and motivation that, that, you know, you're missing. Yeah. So are you a proponent of people just waking up earlier and just getting the workout done? Or do you like it at night? What do you think is the best? It, it, that's a great, uh, great question. It's a personal preference, right? I think for the majority of people doing it first thing in the morning is going to be the best answer because typically, you know, you know, with a lot of the, the, the work that you're doing by the end of the day, you're tired. You don't want to go to the gym. So either a, you get it done first thing in the morning, or you immediately, when you're done with work, go straight to the gym. Because if you go home, you're going to sit down, you're not going to go. But again, I think like talking about motivation, like, oh, I don't feel like going to the gym. You're lacking purpose, right? So I think it goes back to creating the, the reason why you're doing this, creating the goal, and then it's easier to do. But, um, yeah, I, I personally work out. I like to work out midday. That's my optimum time because that's interesting. I'm, I'm most cerebral, um, and focused mentally first thing in the morning. So okay. I, I wake up, I'm up at, you know, four, four thirty, Um, and, uh, I typically like to get out of the house and go to a coffee shop to work. So the coffee shop opens the earliest at 5.00 AM. I wish it opened at four 30, be there. <laughs> but, but I get there by 5.00 AM and I start working and I do deep work for a few hours, get on some client calls. And then I go to the gym at two o'clock. So is your work day basically done at two? No. And then I go back home and work more oh. and I'll work until, you know, typically like seven o'clock, 7 PM, sometimes eight, depending on and then what you time know. you go to bed. Um, I'm in bed. I try to get in bed by nine, nine 30. So nine, nine 30. And then you wake up at four. Yeah. That's four. my optimal schedule. Now, you know, it's funny because a lot of people go, Oh, do you need to wake up early to be successful in any area? No. Right. Like every, everybody's body is different. However, I can also speak on circadian, you know, circadian rhythm and hormones and energy levels are influenced by uh, your, your sleep times, uh, when you go to sleep and when you wake up. So I think preferably how mine and your schedule set up is optimal for energy levels. Yeah, no, I agree. I'm, I always tell people, I mean, I could never work out at night just because of like, dude, I'm trying to leave it all out here during the work day. Like I should just crush it so much in work that like I'm done. Like you, you work out first thing in the morning. Yeah. Fasted or after breakfast? Well, now I, I've done both, but yeah. now I, I, I eat a yogurt and a piece of fruit. Then I go work out. Then after I like that, you, I do, the, you do the shake. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So, but no, it's like, if you already struggle to make working out a priority, it's easier to just wake up. That's, that's what I tell my clients to do. It's like, Hey, if, if you're going to struggle with motivation at the end of the day, get up, go to the gym. And I, I help my clients create a schedule. And it's, it's interesting when you have somebody audit your schedule too, like, Hey, what time are you waking up? I'm waking up at this time. Okay, cool. When are we going to eat breakfast? Okay. I'm going to eat breakfast at this time. Okay. When are we going to work out? Then when you start to break down your, your schedule, you're like, wow, this is doable. But I think people get overwhelmed because they don't write things down. They don't create a plan. So they're like, how does this actually work? How does this look? And that's why people don't get started is they don't create a plan to execute yeah. similar with business. I mean, you're big on SOPs, mm -hmm. you're big on systems. Same thing goes in fitness. Fitness is the same thing. It's very, you know, rep, uh, you can replicate that, right? Yeah. The same skills. hundred percent. Yeah. Well, bro, this is super insightful. I learned a lot of new things today. And, um, I think anybody who is an entrepreneur who's interested in taking health to next level. Like I said, I mean, if you increase your health, you might increase your business 2X by Without just simply being in better shape and allowing yourself to think freer, to have more energy. I mean, I myself can say as a testament, the last six months, I have accomplished more of my business than I did the previous six, just because I'm in better shape than before. And by the way, I wasn't in bad shape. So right. like, yeah. you know, everyone can improve. It's not just Okay, if you're if you're out of shape, your room for improvement is going to be Much massive. Yeah, yeah, right. And if you're in shape, you still have massive room for improvement. Yeah. But um, we'll link to what's the best way to get get a hold of you? Instagram. Yeah, okay. you can find me on Instagram at Michael Sheedy Fitness. Yep. yep. So we'll link to Michael's Instagram down below. Go hit him up. Send him a DM. He'll take care of you guys. So I appreciate you coming on the show, awesome, man. Brother. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. It's yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah. So guys, make sure you subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace. If you're winning, it's your fault. If you're losing, it's also your fault. If you're fat, it's your fault. Broke. Wealthy, it's your fault. If you're broke, it's your fault. There's no longer an excuse to not be successful. And everybody has that same opportunity to be legendary. It's what are you willing to sacrifice in order to get